Hi, welcome back to Natasha's Reads right now, and right now I'm doing a review for The Queen of Shadows. Alright, to start off with this review, I will give you a little bit of background info. Now, I did read books one through three, and then before I picked up Queen of Shadows, I did read The Assassin's Blade, which is the prequel to the series. And I'm really, really glad I read the books in this order. Uh, there was a lot of references and connection points um, and character arcs, plot arcs that all stemmed from the prequel book that directly <laughs> come full circle in this Queen of Shadows book. So first off, if you want to get into this book, I highly recommend that you read the prequel after the first three books. So first three books, prequel, Queen of Shadows. That is my recommendation uh, to get the most out right, of the so story. Let's get the negatives out of the way in the beginning so we can end on the positives for this book. I'm going to try and do this as spoiler free as I can and I will warn you um, when I start talking about characters. Um, I'll let you know that there's like little mini spoilers because I'll talk about how uh, the characters turned around for me during the course of the book. So this is the non-spoiler portion. So basic thoughts about it. Um, I did not like the beginning of this book. I felt that after Era Fire ending on such a high note, um, lots of stuff going on that this book, book four, really, oh man, I felt like the action just like stopped and like, oh, like a rock. And so that kind of really bothered me. And then the biggest bother I had were the characters. I felt like, you know, after a lot of bad things happen to people, you know, you kind of expect them to kind of slow down, kind of regress. But I felt like my characters that I had grown to love just regressed into whiny, annoying teenagers again. My goodness, I was so annoyed with the characters and that really bothered me because I had really grown to love them in books one through three. Um, so that was my biggest complaint about this my book. My other complaint about this book, and one you're gonna have to take with a grain of salt with me, are the, uh, the love interests did not like them. I felt like everyone was insta-love with the main character, Aelin, and oh goodness. Um, and it was like more than that because like she's now from the third book, so n spoiler for book three, um, she, they find out she's the queen and everyone wants to serve her. But, like, it goes beyond that. Everyone wants to be romantically involved with her, which doesn't make a lot of sense. So that really bugged me in the beginning. And, and I felt like the real relationships that needed to get off the ground were just stuck because they wouldn't talk to each other or they were all being really teenage dramatic and making the relationship way harder than it needed to be. So that was my other super big negative of this book. So the end of the non-spoiler section, I will say the ending, the middle and end of this book were fantastic. Once people started talking to each other, once people started letting go of petty grievances, the story took off and I ended up loving it. There were those really fantastic connections to the prequel that left your mind blown and it just made a lot more sense. And then you get the plot twist, you get um, just the full backstabbing come around, what, what goes around comes around moments of the book. And at the end, I felt like um, I was back on board with all of my characters again. So that is the end to my non-spoiler section and I'm going to go a little bit deeper into characters so if you don't want any kind of spoilers I would stop right here and I'm going to get into little tiny spoilers just about like the characters and how I felt about each of them. So I'm going to start with the character Aelin. 
um, our main character. And I'm going to say, man, she was so mean to everyone at the beginning of the book. And, like, unnecessarily so. I, like, I understand that sometimes she had to, like, push people away in order to, you know, plot and um, get what she needed for everyone. But, man, there were some times where she was just picking at things that didn't need to be picked on. And so she really bothered me in the beginning. But, of course, throughout the book, her cleverness that I didn't see coming just just blows my mind. So that's where I am with Aelin. And then, of course, her love interests are always super dramatic. I feel like she's way more dramatic than she needs to be. But I'm still on board with her. Still want everything to fall into place for the queen and um, for her to get her kingdom back eventually. So that's my little review of Aelin. Now we're going to get into Kale. And uh, at the beginning, I super loved Kale in the first couple of books. And then, of course, <laughs> as this book did, I was super annoyed with him again. So I'm going to also talk about Kale and on the flip side, Manon, which we met in book three. And I kind of feel like these two are both sides of the coin. I feel like Manon is uh, the evil version of Kale. And kind of here's my thinking behind that. The blind loyalty. Oh, that really bu bugs me. I mean, you just have to think for yourself. Don't just be loyal just because that's your job. <laughs> And with Kale in the beginning, I felt like a lot of his uh, whiny, not letting things go, came from his blind loyalty to, you know, Ottawan, to the kingdom. And that's where I always had his beef with him. He just couldn't see. He couldn't see what behind his own loyalty. And I feel like that's the same with Manon. Like, she is a very interesting character. She's like the evil side, but little glimpses of, you know, her witch heart melting in some sense. And, man, I'm super interested to see how her story progresses in the next books. Because, I mean, she's the evil blind loyalty. She's still cruel and um, has her evil witch moments. But then she like starts thinking about things differently and little moments start happening where she chooses a different way of living. So very interested to see bo well both of these characters with if they get their blinders off what amazing characters they could be. Okay now this is going to be a big spoiler so with Lysandra. Okay so spoiler don't watch anymore if you don't want to hear about her. Um, keep looking and it's going to be mini spoilery. Um, okay, so Lysandra in this book, simple version is she, she unveils her annoying self-involved mask off in this book. And she's actually a pretty selfless and loyal person. So that's about as much as I can say without spoiling too much. So, done with Lysandra. And then Rowan and Aelin, that little love interest. They just need to talk. I don't understand why they're having this dramatic inner monologue the whole time when they could just work it out by talking to each other. So that really bothered me. But Rowan is still, you know, the the big fae prince, prince guy. And that's all about it. I like him, but I'm not in love with him yet. So we'll see how that turns out. Okay, and I will say at the end of the book, for something positive about love interests, I actually am okay with a, couple of, with a couple of them, how they turn out at the end of the book. So there is hope at the end of the dramatic love triangle, square, octagon, whatever we're going to call it, with a few of the characters. So there are some positive in the relationships for me at the end of the book. Okay, so overall, um, to summarize... I would definitely recommend reading books one through three, then reading the prequel, and then diving into Queen of Shadows, for sure. Um, I feel like it enriches your reading of the prequel, which then 
leads to the enrichment of reading Queen of Shadows. And I gave this uh, book a five-star review, even though the beginning made me feel like giving it a three. So very hate to love relationship with me in this book. I really hope more people will look past the first couple of books in Throne of Glass and just continue on because the story I feel is really going to start taking off from here and I am very excited to see where it goes. Thank you for watching me ramble on about Queen of Shadows and as always I want to hear what you're reading right now. I hope um, a lot more of you will give Throne of Glass series a chance and keep going with it. Also down in the comments if there's any other questions or thoughts you have about the Queen of Shadows books and want to chat about it some more let me know down in the comments and be sure to label it as spoiler in case your comment has spoilers. So if you like big books or even little books and you cannot lie go ahead and like and subscribe.